joining us online right now is Mark Finkelfritz, CEO and founder of Apollo Healthcare. Mark, good morning. Good morning to you. Hey, good to have you on, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Hey, I'm I'm, I'm here in studio with Ron, and uh, kick it off by giving our audience a background on Apollo Healthcare. Well, uh, Apollo Healthcare came about after uh, about 30 years of work that I did in the uh, employee benefit brokerage business, and finally, finally honing in on some things that didn't make sense in the marketplace and that, frankly, I think everybody agrees, kind of cry out to be corrected. Um, insurance companies get uh, get paid now uh, 15% of what all of the claims they pay cost. So they've got a very poor uh, incentive for lowering claims. Uh, hospitals and physician groups, uh, a lot of them are now big public corporations, and they need uh, earnings growth and so forth. So we've got we've got the, the tectonic plates that sit below our medical system are all moving in the direction of some pretty bad rate increases, and the, the idea that that uh, the the insurance industry was just sort of along for the ride with that process bothered me. Uh, it's kind of a fiduciary for the client groups that we had. And um, I had some familiarity with captive insurance companies and put together a concept that would both uh, protect each self-funded group uh, so that they, they uh, maintained, in effect, the same cost that they would have with a, uh, a fully insured plan, but it gave them a chance to win. They they had a chance to lower claims and capture the savings. So uh, the, the the facts in the marketplace and, and my background mixed together are kind of what prompted this. Yeah. A lot of talk about self-funding now, self-funding coming down to uh, much smaller companies today. Uh, uh, obviously, you're right in the middle of that trend. Why do you see that happening right now, Mark? Well, there, there are a couple of things that are happening. <clears throat> First of all, fully insured rates – continue to rise with really no end in sight. Uh, the risk pools for all the major carriers are getting dirtier every year. And uh, the, the community rates that are going to extend in 2016 all the way up to 100 employee lives uh, are going to be a real problem. Um, and the, 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 the second thing is that um, self-funding uh, self-funding a group plan uh, gives you an opportunity to pay only for what your group uses. And that, in the current market, is really attractive. Uh, the idea that you could get out of a de kind of a deteriorating pool from an actuarial standpoint and then just pay directly for your people's claims is an opportunity for some savings that, uh, you know, I think people really are attracted to. Mark, Ron Bachman here. Um, explain that a little bit further to our audience out there, how self-funding helps you to avoid some of the um, um, uh, negative cost consequences of the, um, of the Affordable Care Act uh, by going self-funded. Okay, well, the, the, the primary... The, the primary issue that we've got underlying this, and I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here before I answer your question, um, the, the medical industry in this country for the last 50 years has been in la-la land. I mean, it's been, there's been an economic dynamic like no other anywhere. We basically have big group insurance plans that pay most of our health care. Employees don't care how much things cost. It's hard to find out how much things cost. Uh, when you need care, you can find out more about a set of tires that you're thinking about buying than you can about the cost or quality for a surgical procedure. And that's, that's not right. And what, uh, what's, what's happening is that the, uh, we've, got, we've, we've made medical care a, a, a for-profit item largely, and even the not-for-profits operate kind of like it is. And we've got insurance companies whose policies give the participants, 
not so much anymore now that we've got these HSAs and higher deductibles, but there's still, once you've hit your out-of-pocket maximum, do you really care how much it costs at the hospital? And the answer to that is probably no. Or, or like I said a minute ago, even if you wanted to find out, you, you might not be able to. So, so the, the disjunction of not being able to connect in a uh, supply and demand marketplace has meant that the price would just go up as high as the, the physicians or the hospitals uh, charged. Right. And you couple that, you couple that with a kind of a deteriorating health profile as far as the average American, um, you know, more, more stress, more obesity, uh, a lot of things that are problematic as far as the, the need for health care. And you put those two things together and you've got just an explosion of cost um, that needs to be addressed. But the fundamental issue about self-funding, and I'm coming back around to your question, right. the, the fundamental thing about self-funding is that it, it puts those incentives back in line. It lets companies... Uh, provide meaningful incentives for good health behavior, uh, for good uh, wholesome, you know, good comparison shopping and consumerism. It lets this be a healthy marketplace, with the impact being a significant reduction in per capita costs, uh, and 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 that's because the employer is not paying a set premium. That's not going to change whether the, your, the results are good or bad. In other words, we've so got to get. Of, okay, so instead of being under the ACA, where you're in some sort of a general risk pool, you're able to segment your your employer your employees out into your own pool, uh, maybe associated with the others that would be part of Apollo. And if you're doing good things like uh, lunchtime programs, good wellness programs, you've got a good work environment, you're going to be able to more effectively. Uh, realize the benefits of lower health care costs uh, through a self-funded program like you're doing. Is that, That's sort of the bottom line, isn't it? I think that's, without all the philosophy, that's exactly right. If you're self-funded, then you, uh, you, you don't pay uh, claims that don't come in the house. You pay, only, you pay only for the care that your people need. And if you have a month or a, or a calendar quarter where that's a low number, then the money never leaves home. So you've got immediate profitability or immediate cost reductions in a self-funded plan when there is good, favorable claims experience. So, Mark, if I'm, a, if I'm an employer with 200 uh, em, employees, I mean, I'm kind of right on the edge there between 100 and 200 to go fully self-funded myself. So what is the benefit of going to your program? Talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, to, to understand the, the advantage that Apollo provides, you have to know something about the um, uh, standard self-funded offering. And, and I, know, I know you guys do, but for the audience's sake, I want to explain that a self-funded plan doesn't mean literally self-funded with no insurance. There is most commonly two kinds of coverage that are purchased by an employer. The employer is still going to fund directly the, the costs of care for, for their people, but they are uh, they're going to have some protection as the as the uh, funding agent there. One's called individual stop loss or specific stop loss, and that's that's like a a twenty five or a fifty or a hundred thousand dollar policy that will cap uh, your risk no matter how much you spend in that contract year. I mean, and then you know nowadays. Uh, over six figures is not that uncommon, so it's important to have that, and that puts a cap on everybody. Every every employee, spouse, child has that same cap. But clearly, if all of them went into the hospital and spent their their specific stop loss or individual stop loss deductible, you have a problem. So there's also aggregate stop loss that basically puts a cap on the entire plan cost. Okay, uh, it says. You can't spend more than this month, this much per month. Okay, so mm -hmm. when you have when you have those two in place in a standard plan, the insurance companies that offer that will set the the fifty, let's say a fifty thousand dollars specific stop loss deductible, and in conjunction with that, you pay for aggregate stop loss. 
and they'll tell you what they expect your claims to be, but that's not where they cap them out. Uh, they don't want that most active first layer of, of risk above what they expect. They want the employer to take it on. So the kind of policies you buy as an aggregate benefit, one that the one that boxes in the whole cost, uh, is something that lets the makes the employer take on an additional 25% of claim risk. And in my experience, that extra risk was enough of a wild card and a big enough number to dissuade people from moving from fully insured to self-funded over and over and over again. So the Apollo program uh, has a captive that um, uh, I should say a mutual group captive owned by the member companies that uh, is built to absorb that 25% risk level. All of our clients have insurance policies from our primary carriers that say they are capped at 100% of expected claims, not 125, but at 100%, and then the captive takes care of that first layer for them. That that model um, is a very interesting model. Um, so I don't want to um, you know pass by that uh, to explain to the audience out there who might be considering these type of approaches. Your your basic core um, platform is a mutual captive insurance company, and most people aren't familiar with uh, a, a mutual concept. Uh, maybe a little bit there, uh, but uh, what a captive is. So why is it a mutual captive? Explain what that is uh, for the benefit of the audience. Captive insurance companies are set up, you know, worldwide for two reasons. One is to let a large company participate in what would otherwise be insurance company profits. So big Fortune 1000 companies set up a captive in the Caymans and they pay their workers' comp or their truck liability or some other type of insurance over into a company that they're the only participant in, okay? That's that's not how Apollo works. Uh, group captive it has multiple uh, participants, in our case, multiple owners, because it's a mutual program, and the, the, ex the sole purpose of, of uh, a, a group captive like that is to uh, spread or reduce risk. We want to reduce the risk of your 200 employee company uh, having to pay an extra $500,000 because you went from 100% of expected claims to 125, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and we do that by taking the, the reserves that are always part of a self-funded plan and just making them a deposit for each company into the captive. And it's probably a little bit much to think that we can explain it in, in detail right. here, but the idea is simply that everyone will have uh, a plan reserve that exists in the captive, and this is a not-for-profit entity owned by them, and that collective money will fund any claims that any of our members have. So gotcha. we're sharing and sharing alike and covering those those uh, risks with a kind of a pro rata formula. And what that lets us do is have employer group move from fully insured to self-funding, something that they were afraid or uncomfortable doing a year ago or five years ago or whatever, because they know that with the Apollo captive they can't get hurt. Their maximum cost on the on their basic insurance contract is 100% benefit, and the captive is going to take all but a few percentage points of any excess risk. So no matter what kind of year they have, it, it comes back to a comfortable one. And meanwhile, if they have a great year, they still get to capture in true self-funded form uh, their savings just dollar for dollar. Good. Excellent. Mark, uh, listen, I really appreciate having, having you on this morning with us. Uh, I'd like to give you a minute or so to leave our audience with a couple of takeaways. Thanks. Um, Thomas Frieden at the CDC uh, has said on numerous occasions that 75% of the money that's spent by American group health insurance plans by companies uh, 75% of that is preventable. 
Uh, Apollo has a uh, an affiliate company called Corporate Health Partners that we think is the best wellness provider in the country. And that is a mandatory part of the uh, membership in our program because we want to create a preferred risk. We want, if you took 75% of your claims out <clears throat> of the premiums that we pay right now, do you know how much you'd pay for single and family coverage? I, I bet you don't. You'd pay $105 for single coverage <clears throat> and 231 for family coverage. If you got 70, if you could do what Frieden is asserting is theoretically possible. Now, we don't expect to do that, but there's so much room. There's so much room for progress in both the consumerism, the, the pricing issues, and also the need for care that could be avoided with some healthier lifestyles that it just cries out. This whole situation and the, and, the, and the health insurance funding just cries out for some action, not not reaction, not not what we've done for 20, 30 years where the insurance company gives you a, a one-year rate and you basically over five years make a one-year decision five times. That's, that's not strategy or planning, and it, it, it's always reacting to the rate renewal increase and making do for another year and then just kicking the can down a little bit further. We want more than that, and we want – there to be one decision for five years. So you adopt a structure and a strategic plan using these kind of tools so that you can really do something about the problem. And, and we're doing that now, and we want 100,000 employees in the Atlanta market to be part of this over the next few years, and it will be miraculous the kind of things we can do. Well, Mark, listen, I really appreciate it. Uh, enjoy your weekend, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks a lot.